Legereus Sneed is now officially a Tennessee Titan as the Chiefs traded him away for a 2025 third round pick along with a seventh round pick swap in this year's draft. Today on the Chiefs Support, we're going to tell you five different options to the Chiefs that they could replace Legereus Sneed. We really do appreciate you watching. As always, I'm your host, Jay Sandrew, and I'm happy to be back in the chat sports studio. Obviously, past two videos weren't able to get all the cool graphics. Now we get them, so we're super happy to have you here. And I'm telling you what, you may ever hit that subscribe button because I'm back here and had to do two videos at home. And well, the bosses are not exactly the happiest right now. So they said that we need to get 60 subs on this video. The first one back in the studio over the past three days needs to be a big one. So get down there, hit that subscribe button because listen, I don't want to hear what or else means. And I don't want to go talking to my bosses about it when we, hit, we don't get 60 subs. So I know we're going to get 60. Just go down there and hit that subscribe button. Let's look at the trade details here for the Jerry seed and kind of break through all that went down. Obviously, the 2025 third round pick coming to Kansas City. The Jerry Sneed heading to Nashville. And then that pick swap in the seventh round. Chiefs moving up right around 31 picks to uh, effectively get a better guy in the seventh round. You're still kind of throwing darts at a board here. Just it out. So here's what the cornerback room for the Kansas City Chiefs now look like without Legereus Sneed, obviously. Trent McDuffie moves to cornerback one, which in my opinion, I think he was already in some ways there. Joshua Williams, welcome to CB2, as he and Jalen Watson will kind of split those duties. Uh, we'll have to see what exactly that looks like. Joshua Williams did play a majority of the back half of the season in a lot of different facets, so I do think he has earned that cornerback two slot. And so with that, is Legereus Sneed's replacement already in Kansas City? Is it Jalen Watson? Is it Joshua Williams? Is it somebody else that we don't even know about? We haven't heard the name of yet. Well, today we're going to go through five other options, and maybe it does include one of those guys to potentially be the replacement for Legereus Sneed. Let's start first, though, in free agency because we've talked about him a couple times on this show in kind of retrospect, obviously, thinking that Legereus Sneed was going to be traded. Now that he has officially been traded, Xavier Howard is an option. And Xavier has been a pretty good cornerback throughout his career in the NFL. Obviously, four years back in 2020, he was highly regarded as one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, catching 10 interceptions. And I think what we look at here is more of a veteran option. Obviously, some of these guys that we look like are going to be younger options, maybe draft prospects. And, well, he is not that. He is right around 30 years old and has been in the league for a good period of time, which makes him honestly well fit for this job because the cornerback room, well, it's very, very young. You talk about Watson, Williams, and McDuffie. They all came from the same draft, and they're all in their third year in the NFL. Now, Xavier this past year wasn't exactly the greatest. 12 pass breakups, one interception is pretty good. Allowing just 500 yards is not bad, only two touchdowns, but he only played 13 games throughout the season, and I truly do feel like Vic Fangio's defense really messed with the coordination of everything in Miami. It just did not work, and the players did not seem to like him, and he did not like the, like, he did not like the players. Again, going back to that 2020 season, though, 10 interceptions, 20 pass breakups. This guy was absolutely incredible that year, 2021, followed up with a pretty solid year as well. 16 pass breakups, 5 interceptions. But the past two years, not exactly what we expect from Xavier with 12 pass breaks, one interception on both years, literally having the same exact stat line. Now, Xavier here is the option that I think I would go with because I know there's some good cornerbacks in this draft class, but I think it's very top-heavy. I like a Nate Wiggins. I like a Kool-Aid McKinstry. But will they be there at 32? And if not, are you willing to trade up for them and get somebody who is young? You trust Joshua Williams, and so in this facet, why not get Xavier Howard, have him play alongside these guys if you need him. It's a one-year deal. It'd probably be pretty cheap, but hey, that's just my opinion. So I have to kind of follow this up with a question to you. Would you sign Xavier Howard for the Chiefs in 2024? He's still a free agent and he's still available. Let me know down in the comments section. Would you like him in KC? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Let me, do, let me know what you would do if you were going to sign Xavier Howard. Let's continue on here with our second option, which is, of course, drafting a cornerback. And now, I've kind of gone through the options and looked at a couple guys, and to me, there's five guys that I could see the Chiefs getting in first in the first round. The first two, Nate Wiggins and Kool-Aid McKinstry, I have seen in pick 32, but more likely for those, you're going to have to trade up. And now that they have stockpiled some picks in 2025, they have the option of doing that. 
Ennis Rakestraw Jr. has been a guy we've mentioned multiple times on the show. I feel like he could be available at 32, along with TJ Tampa. Both of those guys, very, very good options. And then Mike Sanistrail also could be a good one as well. Uh, but I first want to look at Cooley and McKinstry because, in my opinion, if you're going to draft a cornerback in the first round, you trade up and get Wiggins or you get Kool-Aid. And I think Kool-Aid is a very good option that you could get around 22 and not give up too much. His quarterback rating allowed over the past three seasons with Alabama was absolutely exceptional, allowing the worst one being 79.7, and that was three years ago. He's only had two interceptions over the past three years, obviously, and uh, again, that's not something that you're expecting out of your quarterback in some facets because McDuffie has done, a, done such a good job with that. But the PFF grade is what I look at. 88.8 is absolutely great for Kool-Aid, and I truly do feel like he fits the system in Kansas City, and Coach Spags, I think, would be really really good and work wonders with him now Ennis Rakestraw Jr. is also a very viable option and I think he would be the pick if the Chiefs got to 32 and wanted a cornerback I don't know that that's what they want though from the vibe that I'm getting they're very trustworthy of some of the guys they have on their roster or getting somebody in free agency and Rakestraw although he was great in 80 PFF grade I don't think it's worth it for the Chiefs to draft him at 32. I think there are other bigger needs right now than just cornerback. And in the first round, it's not really worth it to go out and get that. But that's just my opinion. Maybe Brett Veach, who we all trust, could do something a lot differently. We're just going to have to wait and see. Now, the third option, well, this one may surprise you. And if you want to know who it is, well, guess what? I want you to wait just a little moment because we got a special, special announcement. Game time is back, and you can get $20 off your first purchase by using code CHIEFSCHAT. Telling you right now, game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is going to give you the peace of mind when buying tickets and their best price guarantee well, that takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Now, obviously, baseball is literally starting this week. We got opening day on Thursday. And, well, Kauffman Stadium still got a couple more years, so go check out a game. Bobby Witt Jr. signing that big, big contract. He's in KC for a while. You can go check out a game at Kauffman, which I think is one of the more beautiful ballparks in all of America. Very underrated. Right next to Arrowhead, too. So, hey, why don't you go over there, get yourself some Chiefs gear in the Arrowhead team store, and then head over and watch Bobby Wood smack some home runs. And once again, you can use code CHIEFSCHAT for $20 off your first purchase. I'm telling you, you're not going to get this deal anywhere else. I'm using game time all the time. In fact, I'm using it to go to a game tonight. Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save on money and tickets, and they have awesome, awesome deals, like zone deals, where you pick a section and then Game Time will pick the seats to get an average of 18% of savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHIEFSCHAT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C H I E F S C H A T, Chiefs Chat, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest price, guaranteed. All right, so who is this third option? It has a KC on it. It is Joshua Williams. Listen, I think this may be the most likely option. I really don't see a world where the Chiefs were comfortable with trading Legereus Need if they didn't like what they had in Joshua Williams. And I've mentioned it a couple times on this show. And if you watch the past two videos of me talking about this Need trade, You've kind of heard me speak highly of Josh Williams, but unfortunately, obviously, I ha haven't had the stats officially. Or I've had the stats, but I haven't had the graphics to show you and back it up. Well, guess what? Now we do. Williams had a better PFF grade than the Jerry Sneed last year. Now, I know Williams didn't face the top wide receivers that Sneed did, and I know he probably didn't play as much, but the fact of the matter is, PFF is a lot, more, lot different than coverage stats and other stuff like that. It's a lot more about the type of player and how well you played when you're on the field. Williams did exactly what he was supposed to be in the 25th ranked corner and all of the NFL over 127 guys ranked. Obviously, Trent McDuffie, he was the number four guy. He was number one until week nine. And, and then Jalen Watson, just a little bit behind them as well. So I truly do feel like they are very comfortable with their options at cornerback on their roster right now. And again, that's why I do think that they will probably still get a cornerback on day three just because of the options being somewhat unknown. 
They really like Williams. They really like Watson. But I don't know if they're like 100% comfortable with having it just be them. So I could see a day three pick being used on a quarterback. Maybe potentially if they wanted to go a day two pick. I find that less likely, but we're just going to have to wait and see because, well, uh, it's going to be one of those things that Brett Feach is just going to have to wait and do himself. All right, the fourth option for Legereus Needs replacement, Eli Apple. And I know what you're thinking. What are we talking about, Jason? I, I can't do this. I I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not serious. Eli Apple is not good, and he will not be replacing Legereus Needs. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I got you, though. I got you. You're all... You're all freaking out thinking Jason doesn't know ball. I know ball. Don't worry. Let's go to the actual option here in Stephon Gilmore, who I truly do feel like could be a very viable option for the Chiefs. Free agent coming off his year with the Cowboys. And honestly, I don't know why he's not signed yet. I know he's getting up there in age and didn't exactly have the greatest year with the Patriots in 2020. But he has kind of reinvigorated his career over the past two seasons with the Colts and the Cowboys. Uh, 13 pass breakups last year, two interceptions, one forced fumble. And then back with the Colts, he had a pretty good season that got him a contract with the Cowboys. Now, once again, this is a veteran option. This is somebody who will come in on a one-year deal type thing and hopefully maybe, maybe teach up a little bit for Jalen Watson and Joshua Williams. I think that's why my mind leads towards signing an Xavier Howard, signing a Stephon Gilmore, because they can teach the younger guys. And Legereus Need was in theory going to be that i mean he was only 27 but now with him not there go get somebody who's been in the league a little bit longer and could really really help out what was a really young draft class and a really young cornerback room what would you do though to replace the jerry thing? are you drafting a cornerback or are you signing a cornerback if you're drafting one type d for draft if you're signing one type s for sign i'm typing my s's but hey my opinion isn't the only one that matters. So get down there and let me know, would you rather draft or sign a quarterback? The fifth option is Patrick Peterson. Now, I know if you watched last year's Steelers team, you know that Peterson initially, or at the end of the season, switched over to safety where he played better. But I still do feel like he has somewhat of a keen mind on the cornerback game. And I think this may be one of those situations where you sign him on a one-year deal to be in what is, in theory, a coach while you have him as a safety option as well. He allowed four touchdowns this past year, 11 pass breakups, two interceptions. The QB rating obviously isn't an exceptional, allowing an 80 passer rating. Uh, 388 yards isn't bad, and the completion percentage is not bad as well. But again, his experience is where I feel like he is going to be signed somewhere. He played with the Cardinals, the Vikings for the past three seasons before going to the Steelers. And we all know what type of player Patrick Peterson used to be. And again, if you're trying to find a way to kind of navigate your roster, you don't fully trust Jalen Watson, you don't fully trust Josh Williams, but you don't want to go out there and draft somebody, Patrick Peterson could be a viable option. I truly do feel like he understands the game and will be able to go in and tell Watson and tell Williams, hey, Let's do this. Let's do that. And in some ways, McDuffie, because I know McDuffie is a top-rated quarterback, but people don't realize he's the same age as Williams. He's the same draft class as Watson. It's, it's just the way it goes. It's a very young cornerback room. One-year deal for Patrick P would be what I would probably do. I know, again, last year wasn't his greatest year, but the fact that we're into late March, nearing April, and he's still on the board – for the type of player he once was, it kind of fits the Chiefs' vibe. We all know they like to sign these veteran guys to kind of late, late careers. Plus, hey, Patrick, you may get a ring out of it, buddy. So, you know, maybe take a little team-friendly deal, come out here, be somewhat of a coach, be an option at safety, be an option at cornerback, just be able to rotate it in a lot of different facets. I will say this, Brett Veach will do something, whether that's drafting a quarterback in the late rounds, maybe he does it in the early rounds, I don't know, or he signs somebody... I know they trust Watson. I know they trust Williams. But I do feel like he wants to make sure that this team is fully, fully ready in terms of depth. I don't know if they're there just yet, and I don't think he does as well. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button because, well, once again, the bosses, I've been out of office for a couple days now, so I need your help. 60 subs on this video or else, listen, I got to get it by tomorrow. So if you're not subscribed, you ain't alive, and you made it to the end of this video. That means you enjoyed some or at least a little bit of what I said. So 
get down there and hit that subscribe button. I really, really, really would appreciate it. For now, Chiefs Keenan, that's all I got for you, and we will see you tomorrow. Peace out.